Welcome to Beyond the Beacon with Bishop Kevin Sweeney, a podcast of the Diocese of Patterson, New Jersey. Join us for weekly conversations about our Catholic faith, and together let's strive to live a life of faith, hope, and love. I'm Jay Agnish. With me is Bishop Kevin Sweeney. Bishop, how are you? I'm good, Jay. How are you doing? Doing well, thank you. It's been, been a little while. It's good to be back with you here. I have to say I really enjoyed last week's uh, episode down in the archives. Oh I yes, think, right. As our audience is kind of taking copy. that in and having a good reaction mm -hmm. to that, so mm -hmm. yeah, we'll have to do we'll have to do another one. I, I liked your idea of heading over to the cathedral, cathedral maybe right, one right, time. Right. But uh, I uh, so a couple things I want to ask you about Mexico City, but first I wanted to point it. So over your shoulder to the right, if you're watching, we have our new Beyond the Beacon T-shirts. And we are going to be giving a couple of these t-shirts out for free at a very special event that we have coming up soon at our St. Paul Inside the Walls Evangelization Center. It's um, a live podcast recording with one of our favorite podcasts, Jesuitical. Yes. Bishop Kevin is going to be featured on the podcast. And uh, it's open to all. And uh, check out the show notes for details. Uh, it's going to be the podcast recording followed by an off-the-record Q&A with the hosts of the podcast and with you, Bishop, and then a meet and greet after. So this is a really cool, exciting event that we are uh, we're hosting on September 11th. So check the uh, the show notes for for details. So what's going and, on, um, Bishop? September 11th, as we know, is a day when we pause and recall the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. And... Um, We'll have uh, mass at the beginning of the uh, time together, um, and then the event that's open to the public will be a little bit later. I think that's right. Um, and uh, uh, you know, I think uh, seven o'clock. The timing um, certainly that'll be part of our conversation as well. The impact, I think, was 23 years ago um, yeah. when the uh, that that the attacks happened. So, um, and Ashley and Zach, right, or the, the yeah. hosts. Yeah. Uh, uh, I had a nice conversation with them and their producer Sebastian a few weeks ago to talk about what we some of the uh, topics that we may discuss. Um, looking forward to that. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, uh, the election is going to be the that could be right, right, right. Uh, it seems uh, 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 as that gets closer. Yes, um, and um, you know, just also um, we'll be mentioning um, there's going to be a March for Life in here in our state of New Jersey at the end of September, September 26th. So just want to mention that you can get information on our DAS and website. Um, and it's going to be the first time it's going to be organized by the group that does the National March for Life in Washington every year, January 22nd, um, the anniversary of Roe versus Wade. Thank God that's been overturned. But um, to build that culture of life is still a challenge, especially maybe here in our state and um, in this area. So um, an opportunity for us to um, share our faith in the public square and, uh, and advocate on behalf of life um, for women and men and families, and, um, but uh, on behalf of life uh, and that our laws would respect um, that life begins at conception. And so, well, again, we'll have more information, but that's coming up. And uh, so, uh, that, you know, we'll have plenty to talk about. With, yeah, uh, yeah, and I, th you know, I think that leads in perfectly to every first Saturday of the month you are uh, participating at St. Margaret's, uh, St. Margaret's and Morristown right. uh, in a in a march in a mass and a procession That's for right, life, right, and right. all Everyone's are invited welcome. to that. Yep, yep. And we have with us Father Dalon uh, Elizabeth, who is uh, the par parochial vicar at St. Margaret's in Morristown. He's our guest today. Uh, so Father Dalon. He left Cuba for the United States when he was 19 years old, and he found his way to New Jersey, where he studied at Immaculate Conception Seminary School of Theology at Seton Hall. He also went to uh, St. Andrew's College. He was ordained um, a priest of the diocese in 2019 and has been serving as parochial vicar at St. Margaret of Scotland Church in Morristown ever since. But recently, Bishop Kevin Sweeney gave him permission to serve in Cuba for one year as a mission priest. So we'll, we're going to get into all that. But uh, do you want to do you want to pray? Sure. First or? Um, let's place ourselves in God's presence in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we gather in the Lord's name and give Him thanks for His presence, we pray for our diocese and for all those called to follow Jesus in all of our different vocations and 
especially for Father Dylan as he looks forward to going to his, the land of his birth and where he was raised uh, to serve in Cuba, that the Lord would guide him and that the Lord would open each of our hearts to serve our brothers and sisters in need. The patroness of the Cuban people is um, our lady under the title of um, uh, Nuestra Señora de Caridad de Cobre, right? right. Of charity. Um, so let us ask the help and intercession of Mary, our Blessed Mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, Mary full, full of grace, grace the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, women, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners, sinners now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Um, just before we begin, since we're uh, broadcasting, uh, recording a day after the Olympics ended, uh, mm. I wrote a little column about it this week, and but uh, happy to see Scotty Scheffler win the gold in Olympic golf, and uh, which was amazing. And then uh, I, I know the women's game was very exciting, and it's amazing. The United States women's team, they haven't lost like 60 games. Um, the basketball. And, yeah, they won yeah. by one point. Uh, soccer, women's soccer won the gold as well. Mm. But um, I happened to see the men's final in basketball on Saturday, and um, the old, uh, old school guys, the... Um, Stefan Curry was incredible at the end of the game, and LeBron James was great throughout, and Kevin Durant, who had been uh, battling injuries the last few years, uh, along with a real team effort. Um, it was, uh, it, uh, I know different people like different things in the Olympics, but uh, yeah. I enjoyed seeing the USA. Uh, Cuba has had good basketball teams over the years. Yeah, this year Cuba have been like... Uh, Did they have any uh, Olympic medals? Yes, like I think six. Oh, Seven, good. Yeah. yeah, right, right. We, um, we went, before we were better, but now this, yeah. Um, track and field too, right? Some of the stuff. Um, yeah. And uh, I guess baseball was in for a little while, and it must be out right. now because it wasn't, but baseball Cuba would have been right there. Yeah. <laughs> Break dancing now. <laughs> that's right, yes, yes, that's right, yes. So. Um, Skateboarding. Yes. Uh, so, Father Dallin, thank you for being with us. And um, uh, as I've been in the diocese now four years and a big responsibility as bishop is to get to know each of our priests and and be in discernment with them and um conversation and uh and you know the um both uh, uh, in the ordination of a priest and also um in celebrating funerals of our priests um it strikes me that um we should always be grateful and aware of uh, where priests come from, right? They're not from 3D compu uh, printers, right? Uh, <laughs> they, so up, they come to us from families. And here in our diocese, we have, we're blessed by priests who come to us from within the diocese and from many other places. So um, Father Dylan is one of those priests who came to us not only from outside the diocese or outside uh, um, the state, but, um, but outside the country. Is, um, he came um, not specifically to come to the seminary, right? But um, your dad, I believe, was in Florida, and uh, and then you had the opportunity to come spend some time with him. And as Jay said, you found your way to, from Miami to New Jersey and into the seminary. But maybe before we talk about that, um, what was it like uh, growing up in Cuba? Um, what, where were you born, and what part, and and what was life like there? Uh, what year were you born? You're still a young guy, I know. Um, I was born in 1986, um, so. I'm from the fisherman town, small fisherman town in Cuba, in the east side of the island, um, far from Havana. So, um, yeah, my childhood was, you know, to play in the ocean, you know, things like that. My house is in front of the ocean in Cuba. So, beautiful town. Um, you know, you have one brother, is that right? Yes, I have right. one brother right. there and, right. and a sister here in, in, in Miami. Okay. Um, so, you know, people today ask me, um, it's amazing that, you know, that you are a priest coming from Cuba, you know, that you are a priest. And I said to people, you know what is amazing? It's not only that I'm a priest, but uh, that what I, I was baptized, mm. you know. In those times, difficult times in Cuba, you for know. For the church. Yes, for the church. Um, so uh, people didn't go to church, very few few people, all ladies who, you know, who always remained there in the church that didn't left the church. And so thanks to them, 
and to my family that sent me to Sunday Mass, you know. Uh, thanks to them, I, I knew Jesus, you know. Did, uh, how, were you baptized as an infant or? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Do, I guess you've heard the story of was it uh, your mom or your dad or grandparents or who was it that wanted to make sure that you would be baptized? My father and my mother, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so they, they brought me to church and they baptized me. And so thanks to these ladies, all ladies that, you know, they stay there, they teach me the, the, the faith, you know, the, the catechism. And, and so I grew up in the church. And I think I remember you telling me about a, a particular priest who you saw as a role model? Yes, yes. A father, um, I have a, a priest there who always um, was, um, you know, um, trying that, trusting everything to us, you know. Very few kids that we were there in the church, you know, teenagers, that we were always in the church. And, and the priest there always, you know, trusted us with everything in the church. So I, I, you know, I spend more time in the church than in my house. He you kept know. you busy. Yes, always right, doing right. things in the church. That's where you were sir, altar server, you yeah. were? Ring the bells, um, okay. you know, open the church, close the church, do everything, yeah. everything in yeah. the church. Awesome. Yeah. And now you had, when, in our pre-interview when we talked the other day, you uh, spoke about how you got to know the, uh, the youth of your town, your area, and you would, would play with them, you would teach them values, yes. you would eventually even lead some to become baptized. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, as a teenager, where we were not supposed to talk about religion outside the, the church, right? As, outside the temple. But as a teenager, um, I used to go outside of the town in a very small community there, poor community. Mm -hmm. um, teach the children the um, values, Christian values, not talking about religion because mm. we were not able to talk about religion outside the church. So little by little, you know, we got, you know, the, 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 their parents, you know, like friendship and we start, you know, going there. We always bring something to eat, you know, things like that. We play with the, with the children in that community. So at the end, we were able to baptize all of them, all, oh. all the children, to brought them wow. to the church and to baptize there. Yeah. One year I went back to Cuba, and there was a lady there in the church, and she came to me and said, Dilo, do you remember this? And she brought me a picture. Wow. And I was uh, standing with an alp, like I was serving at mass, and I was around like 20 or 30 kids, you know, children around me, children that I brought from that community wow. to be baptized wow. in the, wow, in the church. That was something beautiful, wow. yeah. We, we gotta uh, get a copy of that photo. <laughs> 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 and um, yeah, I think things changed a little bit. Um, I'm trying to remember now the year. Uh, do you remember um, Pope John Paul II being able to go to Cuba? Yes, 1998. 1998, right, yes. right. First and time, that was yeah, we, we saw outside like poster of John Paul II, you know, they, like in uh, mass in the TV, things like that. That was, yeah, that was, uh, that was something. And it allowed things to open up a little bit, would you yeah. say? Right, yes, right, right. in the church. Um, we start doing processions, you know, asking always, you know, for, for permission, but uh, we were able to do processions in my town, and yes, things change. Changes. I know that there's um, uh, still to today and over many decades now, very large um, Cuban community, Cuban American community in Miami and Florida, um, and that's where you, your dad was there, right, before mm -hmm. you. Um, uh, was it something that, um, I guess, a number of families uh, in your hometown would have had somebody here in Miami or another part of the United States and that might mean that they would have some possibility of coming here. Um, do you remember, um, was coming to the United States something you had always thought, thought about when you were younger or did it come as a bit of a surprise or do you remember what led to you being able to, to come at 19 years old were you when? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. 19. What, how did that happen? Yes, so my father came here in the 90s 1992, I think, he came here to U.S. and so he became a citizen, and he then brought me here. Yeah, that was something that and, I was expecting. Right, um, and you were um, six years old um, when your dad left, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a hard thing in itself, right? Yes. Uh, and um, I'm sure that took some adjustment, but um, when he came here, then there was the possibility, um, and 
was he able to come back to visit or was it 13 years before you, you would see him again? He came back to Cuba on 2000. Okay. Yes, right. that year right. in 2000 right. he came back to see me. So your vocation story is, is kind of wrapped up in that time when you left Cuba and, and went to Miami, right? And, right? and it, yes. you had spoken about how daily mass was a big part of that for you when you were in, living in Miami? So before I came here, when I was like 17, 18 years old, uh, I started going in, in Cuba to discernment, discernment meetings in, in the diocese of Holguin. And so I did that for one year, you know, discovering my vocation. And I thought about priesthood. You know, that's something that I wanted. Were you in school throughout your late, later teen years? Did, does yeah. high school go to like 18 years old here, uh, as it there as it does here? Yes. So did you graduate from high school? Yes. Around mm -hmm. 18 mm -hmm. years old? Yes. But that last year of high school is, or junior, the, the second to last year, is that when you started attending discernment groups, See, right? Yeah, yeah. We, w we used to go uh, like three or four uh, guys from my, from my parish to to the discernment meetings in the on weekends. Mm -hmm. And so um, when I came to Miami, I was 19 years old, started working in Miami for five years. And, but I always tried to go to, to, to daily mass, yeah. I try, you know. What kind of work did you do? Uh, in the furniture company, I used to do um, repair. So furniture, like leather, wood, whatever. A you carpenter know. like St. Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that for five right, years right. in Miami. And then, um, did you say it was Father Enrique Corona that was your first uh, contact with yes. New Jersey or he with the Diocese of Patterson? Yeah. Yes, he invited me here. And so I came here, um, you know, I said, yes. Yeah. I talked to my father. I remember I called him when I came home. I said, I, I need to talk to you. And so I told him, you know, I had to, you know, to stop working here and going to, to the seminary in New Jersey. Did you have some family here in New Jersey? In, no, 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 well, no. So family back home in Cuba, right? Yes, yeah. And in, Flor and in Florida? Yes. Right, right. Um, and how did your dad react or respond? He hugged me and he said, wow. you know, I'm your father, I love you, so this is your home. And so that's it, I came here <laughs> eight years <laughs> and, in the uh, seminary. And um, you, you were saying when you first came, you didn't have much English, and in Miami you didn't have to, no. you didn't, it wasn't <laughs> a need, right? Uh, so then, um, uh, little by little, poco a poco, did you start, yeah. you had to start learning a new language, and, and you came all by yourself here to Patterson, right? And uh, I guess Bishop Serratelli and the seminary community, um, mm -hmm. a, a freshman in college, right? Um, uh, I guess you were accepted to Seton Hall University, right? And, right. Uh, and you started that journey. Philosophy, taking all these classes was difficult, you know, learning English at the same time, that was oh, something. Wow. <laughs> the first two years I got C and C and C, and then mm -hmm. uh, at the end I got an A, so right, that right, was good. Right, <laughs> right, nice. right. Um, and it, you ended up eight years on the campus of Seton Hall, right? Because yes. the college seminary St. Andrews and then mm -hmm. the major seminary of Immaculate Conception. And then, um, uh, was your dad able to come for your ordination? Yes, uh -huh. he came for ordination. Was your yes. sister here at that time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, your mom must have been there yes. in spirit, right? And uh, uh, she was happy, would you say? Yes. Yeah. She's and happy now that I'm going back. Right, right, <laughs> right. Uh, and then um, uh, w what are your memories from being a newly ordained priest, uh, being assigned to St. Margaret's? St. Margaret. St. Margaret, I, uh, you know, I tell them this is a family, you know. It's a Margaret something. It's a beautiful community, right. five years there. Right. But you know, before I went to St. Margaret, I was assigned as a seminarian and, and also deacon to, with Monsignor Kopke. Oh, is that right? Oh. I was there in, in St. Anthony's, Anthony, in well, Hawthorne, right, yeah. Right, right. So you had an experience, uh, another good experience. Of, yes, uh, all my years parents. in the seminary with Monsignor wow, Kopke, wow, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Um, and they made you feel at home, right? I, yeah. I've often commented that um, when seminarians and priests come to us, uh, especially seminarians from outside the diocese, outside the country, um, they don't have family here, and they mm. need to be received by families in parishes, and so many families do that so well, and, and that was the case for uh, with Monsignor Kupke and the yes. community at, at, at St. Uh, Anthony's and Hawthorne, right? Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, and then, um, uh, 
I guess you heard that uh, you were going to be getting a new bishop, right, uh, in 2020. <laughs> uh, and uh, I remember you coming to me not too long after I arrived. To yes. Your brother was, you were having some family things. Your, um, mm -hmm. um, your brother's uh, fiancé was expecting yes. a child at that time, and, uh, and you felt the need to, to be there for your mom and your brother, mm -hmm. right? And you asked for some time. You want to talk a little bit about what that experience was like? Yes, and thank you for, you know, giving me that time um, in the situation that I have with my family. And so I was able to go back to Cuba. You know, COVID was here already. But when I went back, COVID was starting mm. in Cuba. So I, um, I went there. I asked for permission to also celebrate mass, you know. Um, they gave me permission, the government gave me permission. So I started going to different churches in, in my mother's town, you know, communities, places that they have mass only once a month. Mm. So that was, you know, that was beautiful. I was able to be with my family at the time and also to, to serve the church. So is there a lack of priests in Cuba yes. then? Yeah. Tell us about your, the diocese there. It's a diocese of Holguin. Holguin, yes. Holguin. Holguin, yeah. H O L G U I E N? Yes, Olguin, yeah. Mm -hmm. Olguin. And um, yeah, this is a big diocese in Cuba. Uh -huh. I think they have 32 parishes, um, 24 priests, and four of them, I think they are uh, elderly. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, they are in great need of priests. Yeah. And that's something I always see when I go back there, you know. Yeah. Um, I was able to, to talk to Bishop. Uh, and um, your uh, pastor, Father Dubernay, and um, the people at St. Margaret's, I know, um, have been, you're, as you said, it's very much of a family there. And But um, spending five years in your first assignment, or first assignment could be five, six, but it could be th two or three as well. So mm -hmm. uh, depending on needs of the diocese and the situation. And so um, you... Um, we're blessed to have a full five years there, and as we had discussed, it was probable that you were going to be moving on. But then there was a more recent trip um, in the spring, this past spring, mm -hmm. that led you to ask about the possibility of um, spending some uh, long, longer amount of time back in, in Holguin, right? Yes. Yes, and thank you again for, for this opportunity. Um, um, so... I was uh, um, had some contact with the bishop, Bishop Emilia, Emilio Emilio Emilio. Oh right? yeah, uh, and uh, he actually knows um, in the Brooklyn diocese uh, there's no auxiliary bishop, Monsignor o Bishop Octavio Cisneros, who um, uh, originally from Cuba, and uh, uh, the former vicar general, um, Monsignor Otto Garcia. Um, so uh, uh, Bishop Emilio knew that I had originally come from Brooklyn, and he knew these two. Uh, Cuban priest, wonderful, oh, wow. yeah. wonderful priest in Brooklyn, and uh, awesome. so um, he shared with me a little bit about what Father Dylan had shared about the, while, while there's 32 parishes, there's a lot of people out there spread out, right, in mission, par mission churches, yeah. um, and so, as you say, some people only have Mass once a month, and mm -hmm. so um, you, you felt that um, call, uh, I'll make a little comparison, I'm not sure how familiar Father Dylan is with the story of St. Patrick, but uh, he was uh, living in England, at, growing up in, 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 in Great Britain, uh, and was taken as a slave in, uh, in Ireland, and he escaped, um, but he felt the Irish people calling him back. Mm. Um, so it sounds a little bit like you've felt wow. some call to, to go back to your, the people uh, of your homeland, right, and spend some time serving them as a priest. Um, yes. And a, a chance for you and us to give back to them, right? Because they right. gave you to us. <laughs> and, and so it's important that uh, so, uh, St. Pope John Paul II, and when he came in 1992 to the Dominican Republic to celebrate 500 years of Christianity in the Americas, um, talked about that intercambio, that interchange, that yes. um, the church in the so-called first world and third world, that we should be working mm -hmm. together. So this is an opportunity um, for us to share you right with um with uh the a place where there's great need and 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 where you re really received your faith and your vocation right right and starting soon the the jubilee year too that's so right that's right that's uh, 
uh, there are a lot of plans in in Olguin. It sounds like uh, yeah. uh, Bishop Emilio has a lot of work for you already. Yeah. Planned <laughs> to do, <right? laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but I'm happy, very happy to do this and so to serve my own people, you know. And um, the people of St. Margaret's will be with you in prayer and spirit, right? I'm sure yes. you've been receiving a lot of encouragement from them, is that yes. right? Yeah. Yes. They have been very, you know, generous. They have been very, um, uh, you know, a Being a large, largely love. immigrant community, they would understand, right? The, um, yeah. Um, that um, sense of being in two places yes. at the same time, right? Your heart is, uh, it's, it's hard, but, uh, um, uh, and, you know, Bishop Saratelli, uh, thanks be to God, um, uh, uh, we're always in need of priests and we need to pray for vocations, um, but, um, you know, um, there are parishes that need a Father Dylan here in our own diocese, um, but you're going there for a time and you'll be back, and uh, this sacrifice on, on our part um, allows you to, to provide much needed yes. priestly ministry there. What was it that prompted you to approach the bishop and ask for, to be able to go to Cuba and have this assignment? What, what was I, calling you there? I talked to Bishop even like two years ago when I went uh, the first right, time, right. I talked to Bishop, and I talked to Bishop there too. Right. And he said, Father, you are okay. welcome here. Um, I think at that time you said, I might be coming back to you at some yeah. point to say, can <laughs> yeah. I go for, I think that's, yes. yeah, right, right. Yeah. And so, yes, after five years in St. Margaret and, you know, um, seeing that I could be moved and, you know, I talked to Bishop and I told him, you know, my desire and so he, he was open. So what's the first thing you're going to do when you get, when you get there? Get, well, get your I car start situation lined up? Or? Well, I'm, I'm arriving then um, when, when they are starting the novena to Our Lady of Charity. So I'm going to go uh, get there and to start, you know. Um, and the novena is a big, big deal there, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and Our Lady of Charity or Caridad de Cobre um, it, on se September 8th is the national patron, right? Yes. Saint, so um, that's a big day in Cuba, right, church. Right, yeah. right, right. Uh, and the nine days leading up to it, right? Processions, yes. masses, mm -hmm. um, uh, rosaries, a lot of rosaries. People meet at a home. Right, they right. They do the novenas at home. So please go and visit them, yes. What are some uh, maybe traditions of uh, Catholicism in Cuba uh, that stand out to you? Maybe not, you know, as opposed, you know, like certain countries certainly have different devotions. What, what is there something in Cuba that's unique to that country? Uh, Our Lady of Charity. That's the big celebration, you know, when people that they don't go to church, they go that day. Mm. So um, the preparation for that day is very important. And, and you know, Christmas, when Christmas comes mm. and Holy Week, so yeah. And many of the, uh, I guess, Latino um, uh, countries that um, their, the love for their, for the Blessed Mother under the title of their patroness, um, obviously, for anyone who knows the Mexican community, December twelfth, Our Lady of Guadalupe, right? Yes. So that's uh, um, for the Dominican community, um, Our Lady of Alta Gracia, right? Yeah. Um, um, uh, uh, the Puerto Rican community. Um, um, uh, Our Lady of Providence, which celebrated, I think, in November, um, and for the Cuban community, as you say, September eighth, Our Lady September of Charity eight. is uh, the big day. Church, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. right. And Bishop, you're going to be heading to Mexico City next week, and it's a good timing, considering that the assumption is Thursday. And can you tell us about the tie-in there? For right. So we'll going? be sharing more slight, information. It's slight uh, tangent. If <laughs> if I that's right. No, no, no. It's uh, uh, happy to. Um, I'm just going, I'm only going for five days from Thursday to Monday, but um, uh, I read this book, some recommended to us by one of our teachers called Priest and Beggar about Monsignor Aloysius Schwartz, a great missionary in Korea, actually uh, founded boys and girls towns for orphans in Korea, then in the Philippines, and then founded a religious community of religious sisters, Sisters of Mary, and um, he died of ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease in 1992, but his last two or three years of his life, um, he, brought, he with the sisters founded a, a girl's town in Chalco, just outside of Mexico City. Um, they now have a boy's town also in Guadalajara. Um, uh, but some, uh, actually the author who wrote the book, the biography on Father Al, uh, Kevin Wells is his name, along with some others have extended the invitation for me to go and, and visit um, 
the, the sisters and the orphanage, and uh, there's about a group of 10 or 12 of us grow, going, so I'll be, looking, I'll be sending some pictures and uh, looking forward to, I think they have 4,000 um, girls in, in, in the wow. orphanage. Um, they, it's a very uh, um, uh, developed educational plan, and they're yeah. training them to be missionaries and evangelists, and um, many of them have been through a lot of trauma, um, and, and the healing process, the sisters, they say, kind of mother the children. And um, yeah. so I've heard a lot about it, and I'm looking forward to that opportunity. We never That's know awesome. where the Lord may call us or how, right? Uh, um, uh, the Lord and our Blessed Mother may um, direct us to, yes. um, to, 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 to service and, and also to, to learn from and see others who, who serve. I'm, I'm sure um, you see evangelists and, and priests who are missionaries and catechists and Bishop Emilio even um, dedicating themselves, right, to mm -hmm. um, serve the people of Cuba in, in some challenging situations, but they, they persevere, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, as I said, I'm very grateful to the diocese. I'm very grateful to you, Bishop. Um, you know, I love what I'm doing. You'll, and I know we have to be a little careful in terms of um, you're not able to just send pictures like, there like you yeah. are here, right? <laughs> but uh, mm. but you'll be able to send us a few pictures, I'm sure, yes. to yes. Yeah, keep us up to date on, on yeah. your work. And uh, and we'll yeah. be glad to share with us uh, some reports, right? Right. Um, are you going to be going, I think, to a, a parish to ask for help for your the mission of the diocese, yes. right, um, in the yes. coming weeks? I'm going to Pompton Lake, and so I'm going to be there on the 24th and the 25th, 25th. Great, yeah. great, great. Well, we, um, um, we'll um, we be praying for you and uh, and seeing whatever we can do to help support uh, Thank you. the church there in, in the Diocese of Olguin. Thank you. Thank you, Father Dylan, for joining us. Uh, appreciate your time. And uh, Bishop, before we uh, wind down this episode, what else is, is cooking for you? What do you got going on? So um, uh, tomorrow I'm saying, by the time you might hear this, it's been happened already, but um, Mass at the um, Blue Army Shrine in Washington Township, I think. Uh, wonderful Shrine of Our Lady of Fatima. Um, uh, I was able to say Mass there last year. They have a Mass on the 13th of every month. Um, um, the 13th of May and October, important dates in Fatima. Uh, and so um, they invited me, and I'll be happy to say Mass there tomorrow uh, as we're recording, uh, Tuesday, August 13th. And then on the 15th, um, I'll be happy to celebrate Mass at the, um, for, on the Feast of the Assumption at um, St. Vincent Martyr Parish in Madison, with, who Father Owen, the pastor there, and the community are welcoming the seminarians for a seminary and summer barbecue. We usually have a, oh, a cool. summer barbecue with our seminarians, so um, yeah. um, I'll be looking forward to doing that on, on this coming Thursday. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Please subscribe, comment, and leave a positive rating. Get to know us better by following Beyond the Beacon on Facebook or Instagram. Email questions and podcast topic ideas to beyond at pattersondiocese.org. Discover our other podcasts, Coffee with Cupkey and the Paul Street Journal. See you next time. Thanks, everybody. God bless you. Thank you for the dialogue. God bless.